this show on the road. We are recording live on Facebook. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm using the old version of Facebook because the, uh, the new version, I cannot figure out how to do that. I've watched videos. I've just, I don't know, maybe it's an Irish thing. I don't know. But however, it's great to be with you all. Let's get our, uh, let's get our, um, our music going first. We always play a little bit of Irish Celtic music, so let's get that started first. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, 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 welcome to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. This week, the Irishman's Guide to Moving from Fear into Possibility. That's what we're up against. That's what we're going to be talking about. There's, uh, there, there seems to be a little more fear going on in the planet right now. And so I think it'd be really good if we... Uh, if we had a conversation about it. All right, again, I just want to check, make sure all my speakers and my microphones, I've got all this new equipment and I'm making sure that I'm, I'm using it correctly. Okay, so we're going to be talking today about moving from fear to possibility. Now, there's a lot I could say on the subject. And come to think of it, there's a lot I will be saying on the subject. But first, the important thing, T. All right, hopefully you didn't get the slurping on the, uh, I apologize for any slurping that happened on the, uh, on the microphone there. I had, a, I, had a, I had an email once from, from a listener who, who said, Dermot, could you do less slurping on the radio? <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I probably could slurp less slurp less all right we're going to be talking today about moving from fear to possibility now when you look around the world and you see everything that's going on and i'm not i'm not dismissing it negating it making it smaller but see there's two realities always going on Always, 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 always. There's two realities. I've learned this from my mentor, Michael Neal, over the years, from my coach, Steve Chandler, from my mentor coach, Catherine Casey. There's always two realities going on. And one is the reality of what's actually going on in the outside world. People's behavior, what people are doing, what people are thinking what people are saying, the experiences they're having. And then there's the uh, experience of the inner world. There's the experience of what, what meaning, we could probably stop the show there, uh, what meaning am I making about what I'm seeing, hearing, feeling, noticing, experiencing? There's the outside-in world and there's the inside-out world. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, all right. Maybe I shouldn't drink tea during the show. Very professional show here. All right. So there's two things always going on. There's the inside world and the outside world. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the outside world is what people will tell you is real. They'll tell you that, hey, this is going on. And everybody, and I do mean everybody in the world, is experiencing it. So it must be real. But if you were to talk to 
20 different people about the COVID-19 or their experience of it. Some people will say, oh, I'm in so much fear about this and I've got so much anxiety and I got, and this is causing me so much stress and this is causing me so much blah, 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 blah. And you might talk to someone else and they'll say, I'm having a, I'm having a great time. You know, I'm learning things about myself. Uh, I've, I'm, I've realized how fast pace I've been living my life, which is where, where stress and worry come from. We're trying to live life at the speed of our thinking about life instead of trying to live life at the speed of life. Now, you may say, well, Dermot, now, what's the speed of life? I think it's about five miles an hour. I mean, I'm not sure, but I think it's about five, maybe six miles an hour. But our thinking is usually going at about 60 miles an hour. And that's where we get into trouble. That's where we get into what I, what I, what I call the snow globe effect, which I'll talk a little bit about later. I'm going to order a snow globe this week. The snow globe is the answer to everything in life. <laughs> I'll tell you about that in a bit. Okay. When we look at fear, and I, I'm going to make some distinctions between fear and possibility, <clears throat> because they're really important. Fear will always shrink your world. Fear is like the backseat driver you can do nothing about. Fear is an inside job. That's a really nice way of saying it. Fear is an inside job. In other words, we have fear about different things. And <clears throat> those things that are happening in the outside world, we make meaning of. COVID virus, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough toilet paper. We could stop there, don't have enough food, not sure about the future. Now there are all things that might be actual factual, but the meaning that we put on them, the meaning that we give them, the meaning that we attach to those things is the experience that we will have about those things. Now, let me say that again, because that's, it, it, it's really the crux of, of, of what I'm, I'm starting to point, hopefully myself and you in the direction of. People say to me, this is the greatest time in the, in the world right now. And people say to me, this is the worst, this is the horrible, most worst time in the world, Dermot. And both things are correct for the person living them, for the person experiencing them, for the person having those feelings. We think from the head up and from the head down we feel. We feel in our heart, but it starts here. It starts in the head or the hat. We think, as Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. I, I tweak it and say, I think, therefore I feel. Thought comes in, start thinking about it, have a feeling about it. And so, when we look at the distinction between fear and possibility, fear is coming through us, not coming at us. Like, if I could walk up to the COVID-19 virus and say, hey, do you have fear built into you? I'm pretty sure the virus would say, no, I'm just a virus. I'm just, I'm just doing what viruses do. I spread, I attach myself to people's insides and that's what I do. That's what I was created for. 
So there's no inherent fear built into the COVID-19 virus. Like she or he is not running around trying to scare people. Blah. In the same way that if you took a, a, a dollar bill and you looked at that dollar bill and you said, boy, this dollar bill makes me feel good. And you gave that dollar bill to a millionaire and he'd go, huh, a dollar, nothing. That is nada, nix, nit, nyat, nyut, nit, nada, nothing. And why? Because we make meaning about everything. We give feelings to things, to outside things. But the feeling, the meaning, the experience of is coming from the inside. Can't come from the outside. Now that doesn't mean that you, you won't, that if you have the COVID-19 virus and, 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 and you get sick, that that's not creating something inside of you. Absolutely. But you could even look at that and you could, you could, you could think it's really simple. We, 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 we feel our thinking. And so you could feel your thinking about being sick and say, well, good time for me to, to relax. Good time for me to, to, uh, switch off. Good time for me to really take good care of myself. Good time for me to ask for help. Good time for me to self-nurture myself more. Good time for me to slow down to the speed of life. That's one of the things colds and flus and viruses and things like that do for us. They, they, they take us out of work. They take us out of eating food. They take us out of running around, grabbing this and buying this and selling that and working on that and goals and all that stuff takes that all out of the way. And it's hard sometimes. It's hard for life to hit the pause button. And that's what's going on right now. I don't know if that was the intention, but that's what's going on right now. And so that's why people are in, are, are, are feeling, experiencing a lot of fear because we're, we're in the unknown. And if you're like me, you probably don't like the unknown too much. Interesting. The unknown, which, which is also another word for fear unknown. And if you add an F to the unknown, you get the fun known, which Another way of saying that is possibility. When we're in fear, most things in our life are black or white, left or right, right or wrong. When most, most of the times when we're in fear, because our worldview shrinks. Coaches right now, for instance, are telling me, oh, Dermot, this is the worst time to be a coach because nobody's spending money on coaching. Nobody's, uh, um, uh, wanting to hire a coach. Why would they want to hire a coach when they're trying to put food on the table? And that's the lens of fear. And, 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 and I don't mean that harshly to all the coaches out there, but our job as coaches is to help people to move from that perspective, that inner experience to a different inner experience from fear to possibility, from reactive to creative, from pressure to freedom, from tightness to lo looseness. I was going to say lucidity or lucidity, but that's got nothing to do with looseness. <laughs> when we're stuck in fear, we got no access to that inner wisdom. Because it's like the snow globe. When you shake the snow globe, the person inside the snow globe can't see anything because all the snow is all shaken up. In the same way that when you're stuck in a lot of thinking about something, 
when your when your snow globe is on turbocharge very hard to see anything you can't see anything very hard to see anything but the great thing about the snow globe and about your thinking is that if you just leave it alone it settles one time i had the neighbor's dog you know and um didn't have him over for dinner now if that's what you're thinking but he was out he was out he was out there and on the side of the house barking his head off and i went out and i started shouting at the dog would you mind shutting up your feckin' old dog and i started shouting at the dog you know and the more i was shouting at the dog the louder the dog was getting and the louder he was getting the louder i was getting it was like a barking contest. Who's going to win, the dog or the human? I'm pretty sure the dog's going to win. No, Dermot, keep at it, keep at it. Keep shouting at that dog. He's either going to bark less or he's going to stop barking. He's going to see that you're the best barker and he's going to move on. Did he? No, because he's a dog and he barks. <laughs> That's what dogs do. But once I, 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 I caught on that, hey, I'm shaking the snow globe here let me walk away and i walked away from the dog and guess what happened the dog stopped barking the dog stopped barking so you don't have to do anything with your thinking you don't have to do anything with your with your anxiety or your stress you can i mean stretch meditate you know breed whatever helps you but have you noticed that, like the snow globe, if you just leave your thinking alone, it, it, it settles on itself. But what happens is we start thinking and we start to get a, 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 a storm cloud or a, or a thought storm. And the more you poke at an alligator, the, the more he's going to try to bite you. Well, in the same way that the more you poke at the thought storm, the clouds get thicker, there's more rain, there's more lightning, there's less you're going to see in a thought storm. See, most people think they have to pull themselves out of the thought storm. Most people think you have to, and I did for years. I thought I had to do something with my thinking in order to stop my thinking from thinking. And have you noticed? Virtually impossible to stop yourself from thinking. That's like telling a dog, don't ever bark. The dog is meant to bark. Part of the makeup, part of the dog's deal. Well, for us, thinking is part of our deal. That's what humans do. We think. We think. Yeah, we think. We think. We think. What do humans do? We think. We get a thought comes in our head. We start thinking about it, and then we start feeling that. And then we're so. Well, I tell you what, we're so amazing, humans. After we get the feeling, then we look at something. Oh, it's the virus. Oh, it's the lack of money. Oh, it's the too much time at home. Oh, it's the beaches. They're all closed. Ew, oh, it's the parks. And, and we, 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 we like, what's the word? We put, I'm trying to think of a really cool word, but I can't come up with anything. But we put the meaning that we're feeling, we put that on the outside thing. Whether it's money, the government, the, the wife, the kids, the lack of this, the lack of that. But don't get me wrong. If I was at home here with a lack of food, I'd be worried. I would be worried. But there's also somebody at home with a lack of food who's not worried. Because they're not putting the same meaning on 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 the lack of food that I am. Now, 
being afraid or creating fear or thinking up a thought storm that feels like fear, anxiety, stress, worry. That's mostly our thinking going faster than our living. Right? Fear lives in the past or lives in the future. I don't know that if you're in the present moment with something that fear lives there, but it certainly lives in the past and lives in the future. Oh, what if I don't have enough toilet roll? What if I run out of toilet roll? What if someone steals my toilet roll while I'm sleeping at night and I go down to the shop and there's no more toilet roll? What am I going to do? I'm going to have to get somebody to start sending me newspapers. I don't know. All right, let's not get, <laughs> let's not get into that. So it's not helpful to be in fear. Oh, really, Dermot? Newsflash, not helpful to be in fear. The only time that really you sh that you would be in fear is if there's like a monster or a massive big dog chasing you or a lion chasing you. Then it's like, yeah, time to run, time to feel some fear. Body's only good for about 30 minutes of fear. We were only ever built to be in about fear for about 20 to 30 minutes. After that, it starts to stress our body, stress our adrenals, everything. That's why you see, you know, uh, you see people who are in worry all the time and they're aged because they're constantly stressing their body. Now, we'll take a little break. I'm going to play a little Irish music, and, uh, and then we'll come back. We're going to talk. I think we've talked enough about fear for a moment. Let's talk about possibility. How do we move from fear to possibility? It's a lot easier than you think. Trust me on that one. All right, we'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Let me get my camera going here. And if you're just listening on the audio, that's totally fine. You're not missing anything from the video. All right. So the question becomes then, how do we move from fear to possibility? How do we do that? Good question. Good question to ponder. Now, when I work with clients, so there's a few questions that I'm going to share with you that I, that I often ask clients that I work with. In, in, in terms of looking at this journey, because it's a journey, it's a process. Everything has a process. When you're angry and you want to get back to being happy, joyful, peaceful, there's a process that needs to happen always a process that needs to happen. And so when we look at the journey of moving from, from fear to possibility, one of the things we can do is simply wait. Hardest thing for people, and for me at times, is to wait, to sit, for more than one minute in the unknown. Hardest thing for people to do, and yet it's the most easiest thing to do. If you're willing, so, so you could call this a strategy, I suppose, but 
with my clients, I often ask my, my clients, are you willing with me in this moment to sit for a minute in the unknown? Because I'll ask my clients a question. I'll say, okay, now, what do, you, what do you make about this and this? And instead of allowing the question in, by the way, coaches, questions are the answers. You don't have to be the answer for the client. Be the question. Give them some space. Great time to, to really allow people to have some space. You see, we've been given this time, right? I don't know why or how or by who, but we have this time. And one of the ways that we can use this time is to have a little more space to, to, to explore, to play with the unknown, just to play with it. To be in the unknown just a little bit more. When I'm working on a, when I, when I have a problem, right? Problem is simply an answer that needs a question. And, and Einstein, if I, Einstein said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes on the question. So he knew the value of questions. One of the greatest things as coaches we bring, we bring to the world. So, from fear to possibility, one way to simply move, you don't have to do anything, there's nothing to do. What do you mean there's nothing to do, Derm? There's no techniques, processes, strategies to move from fear to possibility? I'll give you those in the form of questions, but there's not really a technique or a strategy or a process because it happens automatically when you let go of your need to think about something, control something, which is what a lot of overthinking is, what a lot of goal setting is. Goal setting for me for years used to be my, 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 uh, my, a way to, to calm myself down. My, my, my goal anxiety pill, set goals, feel safe, set goals, feel safe. Now, there's nothing wrong with setting goals. I love setting goals. I work with a lot of uh, clients that set goals. Nothing wrong with that. But when you're setting goals to make yourself feel safe so that you don't have to feel that fear, and that's a different, that's a different ball game. So one of the things you can do in terms of moving from fear to possibility is to simply notice that, hey, right now, Right now, I've got, let me see if I, can, if I can find a hat. Oh, here. I've got my, I've got my fear hat on. Derma, what does a fear hat look like? This is what a fear hat looks like, where you can't see anything, it's dark, you're, you're unhappy, you're in the unknown, and you're pissed off about it. This is, this is kind of what, the unknown looks like and feels like. <laughs> now, for all of you listening at home on the audio, I just put a bag over my head, and on the bag it has a, a, a sad face. That's what, the, that's what the unknown feels like for most people. But for me... The unknown feels quite differently. And for a lot of people, the unknown feels something like this. This is what the unknown feels like. So you can go from unknown to fun known. I can't believe Dermot's doing a radio show with a bag over his head. <laughs> I could do the whole show like that just for fun. So if you sit in the unknown, Dermot, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. I'm stressed that we won't have enough money, toilet paper, jobs, whatever it might be. If you can just sit in that for a couple of minutes, 
and just sit and say, boy, I don't know. Now, here's a statement, strategy. I give myself permission in this moment to not know. That's a really good one. Write that one down, coaches. I know there's a lot of coaches listening in today. <laughs> Write that one down. For your clients, too. Hey, can you give yourself permission for five minutes to sit in the unknown? Sit with the unknown. The unknown is not an outside thing. The unknown is the inside thing. It has to be because the way we try to cure the unknown, the fear, the problem, is we try to make it known. We try, to, we try to get out of fear by solving the problem. We try to get out of fear by creating a solution. We try to get out of fear by making ourselves happy again. And that works. But a more simple way is to sit in the unknown, sit in the fear. If you can't sit in the unknown for a minute, 30 seconds, try a minute and a half. Put a timer on. Grab your, grab your, grab your watch and put a timer on. And say, you know, I'm really worried about what's going on in the world right now. And again, I'm not negating that. I'm not negating the suffering that's going on in the world. But if you could give yourself permission to be okay with what's happening in your inside world and your outside world for a minute and a half or two minutes. Hey, I give myself permission to just be with all of this and not have a solution. I give myself permission to be with all of this and to not know what to do next. I give myself permission to be okay with not feeling okay. I give myself to be okay, okay even though I feel like I'm going through hell. As my mentor coach says to me, German, if you're going through hell, you might as well enjoy it. <laughs> One time I was having a massive panic attack. I was doing this, this, this uh, weekend um, training in San Francisco. Hadn't done it in a long time. Took a massive panic attack in the hotel the night before. I called my mentor coach, heaving and howling, and, and um, she said, Dermot, you know, if you're going through hell, you might as well enjoy it. And I thought, what, what, do, what do you mean? She said, look, it's really simple. You can try and change how you're feeling. You can push, force yourself out of the feeling. You can do the spiritual bypass. Used to do that a lot. I'm miserable, but hey, I'm happy. I affirm I'm happy. I look in the mirror. Everything's good. I'm happy. Or you can simply sit with what's going on in your body and allow it to pass through. There's a thought storm. There's a shit storm happening in your head right now. And you can allow it to pass through. You don't have to do anything with it. Now, that struck me as something amazing. She said, what do you like to watch? I said, oh, I said, I, I, I love to watch this series, these treasure hunters. Put it on, watch hours of it, and let that feeling pass through. That's a thought storm that's just having its way with you. And she was right. About two hours into the program that I was watching, I, I noticed I was calm. The snow globe was shaken up so much that when I left it alone, the snow settled by itself. I didn't have to affirm it. I didn't have to do anything with it. I didn't have to go out and eat something, or I didn't have to go out and drink something, or smoke something, or sniff something. Did enough, enough of that in my 20s to know that that's a short-term, not even a short-term solution, it's just a short-term thing. <laughs> so your first non-strategy, non-technique tip is do nothing with your fear. Literally do nothing with your fear. 
Society tells us that, hey, you've got to do everything with your feelings. You've got to do everything with your thinking. You've got to, you've got to change your thinking. It's really hard to do that. It's really hard to change your thinking. Have you tried? I've tried. I used to have hair in the 80s. Now I don't. It's from all the thinking. In, in AA, they call it stinking thinking. When I was 30, I went to LA for 10 years, uh, to AA in LA. <laughs> and um, was there for 10 years. And they called it stinking thinking. So when we're moving from fear to possibility, I'm going to encourage you, invite you, that's coach language for do this. To sit with it and see what happens. Give yourself permission to sit with the fear, with the fearful thinking or the fearful feelings, the anxiety feeling, whatever it is, just, just sit with it for a minute or two. If you're worried about something, you're worried about the future, sit with it for a moment and see what comes out of that. And do you know what comes out of it? Possibility. Ah, oh, finally, he's going to talk about possibility. <laughs> I am. I'm going to talk about possibility. Please apologize. My, my, my apologies for drinking my fluids, but I've got to stay hydrated. Good for the brain, you know. Good for the brain. All right. Just checking my notes here to make sure I'm on track. All right. Have you noticed, everyone, that when you're feeling relaxed, when you're feeling creative, when the flow of possibility is upon you, have you noticed in those states there's a, lot, there's a whole lot less thinking? There's a whole lot less worrying. There's a whole lot of less stressful thinking. Because when we're in possibility, we're in wide view, we're in big picture, we're in creativity, we're wearing a different lens, we're wearing a different hat when we're in possibility. Actually, this is a raccoon, this is not a dog. But have you noticed we're wearing a different hat when we're in possibility? Now, I'm using the hat as a metaphor for a whole lot less thinking. Possibility. And when we're in the, when we can sit in the unknown, our fearful thinking, possibility will come out of that. Because wisdom, inner knowing, Still small voice, creativity, new ideas, new perspectives, whatever you want to call it, comes out of the sitting in the unknown. That's why people, when they go for, to the shower, they, they get ideas. I get ideas all the time in the shower. I've got a recording device in there. I just water resistant. I, Oh, that's a great idea. Let me, let me, let me talk that one out. <laughs> Little strategy, if, if you're in a lot of fear, write it down. Write it down on a piece of paper. One of my clients, I, I, I often tell her to, she, she stresses a lot in the evening, worries about the future. So write it down. Keep a notebook next to your bed. And just write down your thoughts. Write out the problem. And sometimes the answer will come in a dream. Sometimes the answer will come the next morning. When you leave the barking dog alone, the barking dog will stop barking. And when the barking dog stops barking, then you can hear. You can hear something new. Very hard. We, all, we have a barking dog inside our heads. And you cannot hear wisdom. You cannot hear new ideas when the barking dog is constantly bark, 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 talking, barking loudly. Just leave the barking dog alone.
that's why when we look at, you know, when I, when I talk to clients and, and, and clients are struggling with something. I had a client who was struggling with something last week, a problem. And he had all these opinions about the problem. That person is the problem. And I tell you what's really is what's making this problem worse is that person is saying this and this person is not doing that. And my company is not doing this and the team are not doing that. I had all these opinions about what everyone was doing. And that was the problem. And, and, I, and I said to the client, you know, it might be possible that under all your opinions, there's something new, fresh, trying to get out. And, and, and he stopped in that moment and realized that he had shaken the snow globe. Not his words, my words. And he was stuck in a lot of thinking. I said, now let's just sit here for a minute which he didn't like. He said, let's just sit here for a minute or two and le let's just le allow that thinking to settle. Because he had riled himself up, you know. He was like in the driver's seat, revving the hell out of the car. You know. He had one foot on the accelerator, one foot on the brake. Going nowhere fast. That's what anxiety feels like. I'm going nowhere fast. I got the brake and the, and the gas pedal going together. I'm going nowhere fast. That's what rocking chairs were created for. So you could feel like you're going somewhere, but you're going nowhere. You're moving, but you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Smart person who ever created the, uh, the rocking chair and the bicycle that goes nowhere and the treadmill that goes nowhere and the stairs that go nowhere and the mountain climbing racks that go nowhere. I wish I had more of those. That was, that was good. So under your opinions, there's always something fresh. There's always something new, but you've got to be willing to sit with your opinions and allow them to settle. That's why when you're, when you're caught in a shit storm of thought, not a good time to hit send, not a good time to send out memos. Not a good time to have deep conversations with loved ones. Not a good time to tell someone what you really think of them. <laughs> don't hit send. Just don't hit send. <laughs> I should have that somewhere in my office. Don't hit send. All right. So. Got to take this hat off. It's boiling in here. I've got the AC on in my house. I've got the fan going. A hot day today here in, in Northern California. Yay. All right. Let's, uh, let's play a little bit of music and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about possibility here. At least I'm going to do my best to. So stay tuned. In case you're wondering, you're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. We're talking today, The Irishman's Guide to Moving from Fear to Possibility. Stay tuned. All right. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. Oh, yes. Okay. We're talking today about moving from fear to possibility. Now, another non-strategy, non-process, non-technique from moving from fear to possibility is questions. Questions are a great way like when, when a client says to me, I don't know, that is like music to my ears. The hills are alive with the sound of music. That is like music to my ears. That is like gold to a leprechaun. All right. Um, 
Because in that I don't know comes the possibility. When nothing is known, when nothing is sure, everything is possible. When nothing is sure, everything is possible in our world. But we spend so much, an inordinate amount of time, in our world, trying to make the unknown the known. We do all sorts of crazy stuff to, to, to make the unknown the known. And if you can start to play with the idea, play is a code word for practice. If you can play or practice with just one minute a day sitting in the unknown, two minutes a day, whatever it is, I know it sounds like, you know, not much. But if you can sit with that for a couple of minutes each day, hey, I got a problem. Wonderful. What's your question? Hey, I got a problem, Dermot. Yeah, what's your question? Let's find a question for your problem. No, 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 Dermot. I need a solution for my problem. No, nope. you need a question for your problem, buddy. <laughs> question creates possibility. To create, the question creates exploration. The, cre the question creates space. When you're, in, when you're in fear, there's no space. Your world is shrunk. You're like, like when you're in fear, you're like this. You got the goggles on. You're not seeing anything. On New Year's Day, you know, you, uh, you're, you're not seeing anything. Very hard to see when you've got the goggles of, I'm not okay with the unknown. This is the, I'm not okay with the unknown goggles. I'm not okay, German. I need to find a solution. I need to move past this. I need to get through this. I need to fix this. What are we going to do to fix this? Well, what if you did nothing for two minutes? Rawr. Nothing for two minutes, Dermot. What the hell kind of a coach are you? Nothing. I didn't hire you to do nothing. I hired you to do something. <laughs> I got to call myself the nothing coach. If you hire me, I'll help you to do nothing. That's my, that's my motto. I'm the help you to do nothing coach. Because you know what? Most people need help with not doing anything. They're constantly doing some stuff. And as coaches, we help take the glasses off. I was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Can you give me an amen? We help people to take the goggles off. We help people to slow down. We help people to spend some time in the unknown. We help people to slow down to the speed of life. That's what coaches do. For all you coaches listening out there who are wondering, hey, what do coaches do, Dermot? I mean, I really don't know. Doubt no more. Now you know. So, that was a long way of coming back to my point questions. Questions are the answers. As my coach, Steve Chandler, says, Dermot, don't be the answer. Be the question. Be the question. People have got friends and buddies down the pub and people at work and family, and they're all the answer. They'll, they'll tell them what to do every time. Don't worry. I'll tell you what to do. You got a problem? Come to me. I'll tell you what to do. Very few people in, 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 in their lives have people that are willing to be the question for them. That's why coaching is so needed right now in the world. Because people are trying to force solutions. They're trying to, they're trying to pressure themselves into, into making, making um, decisions about stuff and solving things. And as coaches, we help them to hit the pause button and say, hey, you've been given an opportunity to look at this thing called life a little differently. You've been given an opportunity right now to see if this is how you want to keep living your life. What areas of your life would you like to shift? Would you like to put a little more care and attention on? 
What are some areas of your life you want to put a little less attention on? What are some areas of your life that you'd really like to create some beauty around? What are some areas of your life that you'd like to create some new possibilities? What are some areas of your life where you're stuck in the same old goddamn crap and you'd like to create something new? Something of a different focus, of a different viewpoint. So, questions. All right, let's get into the questions. Okay. Moving from fear to possibility. Clients say to me, Dermot, I got a problem. And then I say, what's the problem? And they say, blah, 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 I say, wonderful. So that's the problem, huh? They say, yeah. And I'll say, what do you want to create from the problem? What do you want to create from the problem? What do you want to create through this, from this, about this? What's the opportunity here? What's the gift in this? Through having this problem, what's something positive that you could create from it? It's a wonderful question to move from fear to possibility. Now, it's not a question you force yourself into. It's a very relaxed way of asking yourself a question. Have a cup of tea or coffee, sit down, say, hey, right now I'm in a lot of fear about this. And what would I like to have instead? Different way of asking the question. What would I like to create instead? How would I like to act upon this differently? Another question. What through 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 experiencing this, what is it I'd like to have instead? Through living this, what would I like to live instead? Through feeling this, what would I like to feel instead? What's the opportunity here? What's the possible opportunity here? What is it I'm not seeing here that maybe I'd like to see? Fear to possibility, fear to possibility, fear to possibility. All questions that will help you to move from fear to possibility. Now, I'm going to be creating, and I'll, I'll, let, I'll let everyone know about this soon, but I'm going to be creating a, a Club Fearless. And it's going to be uh, it's Club Fearless, moving from fear to possibility. It's going to be a mastermind group. It's going to be weekly meetings, one hour, or I'll talk about how to move from fear to possibility. We're going to go into this in, in, in a lot more wider detail. I'll be doing coaching in the one hour, answering people's questions, talking, sharing ideas, having a conversation, having a mastermind, having a discussion about how to move from fear to possibility. It's going to be a three-month program, but I'm going to offer, I think, two or three free one hour talks so to get the conversation going if that's something that you're interested in uh, i'll be letting you know about that down the road so stay tuned to that club fearless from fear to possibility and i'm going to make it i'm going to i'm going to keep the price um very very doable for 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 a lot of people because i know a lot of people uh, are already interested in that that i've talked to about it so let's start to wrap up here everyone today I think we've opened the box a little bit in, in terms of this, this subject of moving from fear to possibility. I've given you a lot of questions to think about today. I've given you something not to think about, which is do nothing. When nothing is sure, everything is possible. When you can sit in the fear, then you can move into possibility. When you cannot push against something, then that something will open up. Harry Potter, I was watching Harry Potter yesterday, and um, it was the, uh, the one where, where they were, uh, the prisoner of Azkaban, and the one where the Bogart, you know, the Bogart would take on whatever fear people would have. And so one of the things that they, that they were teaching the, the, the wizards to do was, when the Bogart come out, it would take the form of whatever fear they were thinking and feeling. Right, which is what, what happens in the world, right? 
we look at something and it's like, oh, that's making me afraid. Oh, that's making me afraid. Oh, that's making me afraid. And so whatever the students were thinking and feeling, whatever fearful thinking they were feeling, because we feel our thinking, that's how we experience life. It's really simple. A thought comes in, we start thinking it, and we feel that, that, that thinking, and it's fear in our bodies. It feels real. It's made up, but it feels real in the body. In the same way that the Boggart, when they opened up the, the big chest, and one of, the, one of the guys was really afraid of one of the teachers, and the, the wizard said, well, how would, you, how would you make yourself less afraid? And he said, oh, I'd, put, I'd, dress, I'd dress that teacher, uh, Snape, the dark teacher, uh, up in my granny's clothes. And so he visualized, he started thinking and feeling Snape being in his granny clothes. And then what happened? Snape turned into his granny with granny clothes. We scare ourselves into things and we, scare our th we, we, we try to think ourselves out of it. We scare ourselves into something with our thinking, and then we try to uh, rationalize or get ourselves out of it by more thinking. And that works short term. You can do that. You can dress your fears up in anything. But wouldn't it be magical if you could see your fear for what it is made up? Wouldn't that be powerful? Instead of having to dress your fears up every time they come and they manifest as something, or you, you, you create them as something, or, or you, you put it on something. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could see that, oh, that Bogart's not real. That's just me feeling my thinking. Wow. So we're going to be exploring that in, in Club Fearless, moving from, from fear to possibility. So I hope you've enjoyed the show, everyone. I certainly have a, have a blast doing them, and, and, and this won't be the last time. We'll, we're going to do another one uh, next, next week at 1.30 on Facebook Live, uh, and you can just go to the um, uh, CelticCoach.com, and there's a little Facebook button there on the website. You can click on that, and it'll take you to the uh, live broadcast next week. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you all there. We're going we're gonna to talk uh, a lot more about this whole idea of fear. So stay tuned for that. Um, what else? What else is coming up? Da -da -da, da -da -da. I think that's it. Um, I'm going to post this on all the usual channels. And um, let me know if there's anything that I, can, uh, that I can support you all with. I appreciate all the listeners tuning in and all the listeners on my email list really appreciate having you um share this time and listen to the shows and and it's always been fun for me so until next week think big have fun and stay curious i'm the celtic coach and that my dear friends is no blarney cheers everyone